I'm just really into socks right now. I released the bulky socks video last week, but I found some Halloween sock yarn on Hobie and I couldn't resist. This is Halloween sock wool glitter. I'll put a link to it in the description, but it's seasonal, so I'm not sure how long it's gonna be around. You can tell from my test swatch that the machine kind of shreds the glitter thread, but I'm gonna add some wax to the tension mast and see if that helps. This is a good opportunity to adapt my sock pattern to teach y'all how to make a tall ribbed cuff for a sock. It's pretty straightforward and you can use the pattern that I already have up on my website to get started. All right, let me walk you through the drafting process. We're gonna start by measuring how high we want the cuff to be. Mine's gonna be about eight inches. Measure from your ankle to the point where you want it to stop and then measure the circumference of your leg at that point. And that'll be the top of your trapezoid. Okay, so the cuff of this sock is going to be a big trapezoid. The first thing you wanna do is make a gauge swatch, plug it into the pattern, there'll be a link in the description, and figure out what the bottom of your cuff is going to be. So I plugged mine in and it said 34 stitches on each bed. So that's a total of 68 stitches. And because when we fold the cuff over, we're going to overlap one stitch, that means I need 69 stitches total on the bottom. My top calf measurement was 18 inches, and we're going to knit this at 80% ease. So that is going to be 12 inches. So 12 inches in my gauge is 192 stitches. And then my cuff needs to be eight inches high. And in my gauge, that's going to be 104 rows. Usually when I'm working with one by one ribbing, I only take into account the needles on the top bed and not the bottom bed. So I'm gonna cut all of these in half. That means 96 stitches, and the bottom is going to be, let's call it 34 plus one, and I'll explain that in a minute. We do this because it's easier to calculate the decreases, because you're decreasing by one rib each time instead of two stitches. I'll show you when we get to the machine. So in the span of 104 rows, we need to go from 96 stitches down to 34 stitches. So that is gonna be 62 decreases. And because we are decreasing evenly on each side, we'll need to do half of these. So that's 31 decreases. Or that means a decrease about every three rows. So we're gonna cast on 96 stitches on the top bed in one by one ribbing, and then knit for 104 rows decreasing every three rows, and then we have our sock cuff. Let me show you how this works. I'm casting on 96 stitches for one by one ribbing. That's 96 stitches in working position on the top bed. This is where that extra plus one comes in. The outside needle on each side is going to be on the bottom bed. This will make it easier to seam later. We're going to do the normal ribbing cast on with two rows of circular yarn to perfect the edge and then get into the knitting. It's just knit three rows and then do a decrease, except we're decreasing one rib instead of just one stitch. Using the three prong tool, move the bottom stitches over one rib and then do the same thing on the top bed. You're going to do this on both sides. And that's it. Keep going until you have 34 stitches on the top bed and have knit 104 rows. When you get to the end, transfer all the stitches to the main bed and cast off on waste yarn. There's your big trapezoid. We want the seam to be on the back of the sock and we know that we'll be shaping the heel on the main bed. So start rehanging stitches at zero. 
Refer back to the pattern to know how many you need on each bed. Then bring the work around and double up the first stitch for a better seam later. Bring up the bottom bed and get the rest of the stitches. This can be a little tricky. I like to use a transfer tool to shove the waste yarn between the beds. Knit to RC20 to finish the cuff, and then we're going to work the rest of this sock according to the pattern. If you want a step-by-step -step tutorial for the rest of this, check out my rainbow sock and slipper sock videos. They use the same pattern. There are links in the description. So I got my first knitting machine in March of 2021, and my mom requested socks for Mother's Day in May of that year. She lives very far from me, so I needed to figure out how to make socks that would fit her without being able to try them on. So I found a free machine knit sock pattern on the internet, but it only had one size. So I made a few test socks and then figured out how the pattern worked and reverse engineered a mathematical formula for a sock based on foot measurements. My mom's socks fit perfectly. A while later, I translated that formula to code and that's the pattern I'm using here. Close the toe. Pull off all the waste yarn. And I don't want my back seam to be bulky, so I'm just picking up one loop on each edge of the back seam. This creates a very flat seam. Here we are several hours later and we have socks. The camera is going to focus on my face. We have socks. I made a whole pair of calf length socks in less than a day. You can't do that by hand. Um, I think if I were to make these again, I'd go with more negative ease at the top of the cuff because these are a little loose, but they are still going to stay up. That's about it. <laughs> uh, I hope you found this tutorial useful. Subscribe for more machine knitting stuff uh, and happy knitting.